Good morning. Welcome. Today we are going to expand our list of reasons. Our list of reasons or tools that we have for asserting that two triangles are congruent to each other. Now we know from way back when that if we have two triangles and all three of the angles are congruent, all three of the angle pairs are congruent, they have the same measurement, that those triangles are not necessarily congruent. And the reason is, well, the reason is the scale factor could be different, right? One could be larger and one could be smaller. But Kendall, never met her, but she seems like a nice person. Kendall wonders about SSS triangle congruence conditions. She's wondering if side 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 would be enough to assert that two triangles are congruent. So let's jump over to Desmos and consider that. So you can see, and if you open it yourself, you can see that in Desmos we have two triangles that have been uniquely set up so that pairs of opposite sides are congruent. So I've got the 7.3 and 7.3. And it appears that as I move these triangles about, that they are congruent to each other. Now, of course, if triangles are congruent, there has to be a series of rigid transformation that moves one onto the other. Um, I think the, these two are not going to need a reflection. So. Let's 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 see if we can do this. I'm going to transform these by I'm going to begin by moving point B to point D. So I'm just going to translate this triangle until point B and D line up. There they are. They're lined up perfectly. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this triangle and I'm going to rotate it around point B and D. I'm going to rotate it around them until I'm going to say until until this, uh, what is it, A, A, D, or, or A, B, rather, is parallel with E, D. So I'm just going to line them up. And they, they certainly look congruent, don't they? And when they're, when the rotation orientation is set like this, it's, it's, it's certainly even more compelling. Um, another thing we can do is look at the um, angle measure. So if I pop this open, I can say, um, show and hide labels. Oh yeah, let's just show the angle measures. Yeah, and with the angle measures shown, I, I'm seeing the 27, the 103, and the 50. And yeah, 27 and 103 is 130 plus 50. As they do add up to 180. That's a nice confirmation there of the triangle angle sum theorem. So I'm going to say, uh, and, and certainly this is not a proof of it, but I'm going to say that certainly it appears, I'm willing to accept this conjecture, that uh, side, side, side is a triangle congruence condition. And in fact, for now, we'll go ahead and call this, it's not a theorem, but we'll just con we'll call it the side, side, side triangle congruence conjecture. And we're going to recognize this as now a third way, besides the definition, to establish that two triangles are congruent. And in fact, you probably should flip to the place in your notebook where you're keeping a compiled list of reasons that you can use uh, in geometry. And I would add to those reasons, probably in the same area as the angle, side, angle, and angle, angle, side, I would go ahead and add side, side, side. So if the three pairs of sides uh, of uh, if you've got three pairs of congruent sides in two different triangles those triangles appear to be congruent so we'll add side 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 as a recognized triangle congruence condition aha so going along with the i guess less is more convenient right? having to show fewer things to get two triangles congruent is more convenient kindle is she's excited about side 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 but she's now wondering if she needs all three of the sides maybe we can reduce it because we have this thing with the angles right if I've got two of the angles it forces the third angle to be the same so is it possible that that could happen with the triangle and we could just 
shorten this down to side-side congruence. So let's go back to Desmos and consider that. I'm not using their actual tool, but what, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and break the relationship with these two sides, right? So at this point, I'm not forcing these two sides to be congruent. And I have no... Uh-oh. Oh. Okay. It, it, was, it was not as quickly as, as convincing as I wanted it to be, but... I can see that if that third side is not being held in place, these do get to where they are not congruent. Um, they do have some interesting properties. Though. They, they do have this, this side right, and that side, but then you can see this one can be made much shorter and this can be made much longer. So two sides, two sides is not enough. So we will not add side-side congruence to our list. Of congruence conditions we're just going to keep it at adding the side 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 so we'll definitely say good thinking uh, Kindle but we're gonna say no to side side congruence Kindle's teammate Diego spoke up hey we know side side congruence doesn't work in most cases right in most cases I mean it works in the case that the third side is actually the same but we could we could break that pretty easily in Desmos but what if the two corresponding sides are on right triangles, like in my diagram? So I know for sure that these two triangles are congruent. So what the heck is Desmos talking about? So let's just look at this diagram. And Des uh, Diego is asserting that these two triangles have to be congruent to each other. And... I think the right the right angle is what makes the difference. The fact that we have right angles in these triangles forces them to be, you know, a, a kind of a special situation because now if I was to call, you know, if I was to call this this segment X um and uh actually let's let's use better letters. Let's call this we'll call this leg A and we'll call this leg B and we'll call the hypotenuse C. Hmm. Well, I do know that if I start out with this A and this B, and this C rather, what do I get? Well, I, I'm going to get, according to the Pythagorean theorem, I'm going to have the A squared plus B squared is the hypotenuse squared, right? And if I solve this for B, I get that B squared is C squared minus the a squared right and, and you may be saying well why am I solving this for B well I, I know I apparently know something about that side I know something about this side what I don't know is something about this side so I want to get that alone <laughs> and when I solve this then for B squared I I get that just looking at the principal root I get that B would equal the square root of C squared minus a squared okay so let's run this little experiment uh, with the other triangle. I mean the other triangle. The other triangle. Let's look at the other triangle. Now I know that these were congruent, so I'm gonna label this A as well. And because this tick mark I'm gonna label this C also. But I cannot assert that these are the same. My wondering is are they the same? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna call this mm, let's use W. And my question is must W be the same thing as B? And to answer that question, I'm going to do the same thing on this triangle I did in the first. I'm going to go ahead and write, okay, I've got a leg, a squared, plus the other leg squared, right, has to equal this hypotenuse squared. So if I solve for w, I get that w squared is equal to c squared minus a squared. And then looking at the principal root, w must be the square root of c squared minus a squared. And what's nice about that, right, is you can see evidence right here that both of these, both of these, both B and W are equal to the same thing. They're both equal to C squared minus A squared. And we know this, right? We And, this, and now we've, we've formally demonstrated it. We know that if we have two triangles that have the congruent hypotenuses, 
and one of their legs is congruent, right? We know, we know that the other legs must be congruent. We know that the B and the C have to be congruent. Therefore, these two triangles are congruent by side, side, side congruence. So instead of going through that proof, right, now we can say, well, look, what were the conditions here? Two things. It was a right triangle, okay? And we had the, um, we had, oh, I'm sorry, this was not, it's B is the same as W. That's, that's an important distinction, Mr. Roberts, because those were both legs on the right triangle. And so these were right triangles in which we knew that both of the hypotenuses were the same, right? This hypotenuse was congruent to this hypotenuse. And we also knew that they had one le corresponding legs that was the same. So those were both the same. Well, when that happens, it forces that other leg to be the same. So they're congruent by side, side, side. So what are these? These are right triangles, right triangles with a congruent hypotenuse and a congruent leg. And I don't think our book does this yet, but I'm going to do this now. We're going to give this a name. We're going to call this hypotenuse leg. So we're going to call this the hypotenuse leg triangle congruence condition. And the hypotenuse, whoops, get out of here, keyboard. The hypotenuse leg congruence condition is true because of two reasons, right? It's true because the Pythagorean theorem exists and its truth, its truth is based on side, 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 right? So if side, side, side is a a valid con triangle congruence condition, and we're accepting it as true now. Uh, and the Pythagorean theorem is true, and I don't have any reason to reject that on the Cartesian coordinate plane. Um, then hypotenuse leg is a valid triangle congruence condition. So again, it looks like we're only using two things here, and it's a little deceptive. It is two things, but remember, it's also a right triangle. So it requires, the word hypotenuse implies a right triangle, right? So really, it's three things. A right triangle and the longest side, called the hypotenuse, is congruent, and the leg is congruent. So we now have a another way, right? Side, 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 and today we've also added hypotenuse leg, which applies to right triangles. So at this point, we've tested several different triangle congruence conditions, like angle, angle, angle. Nice, but the problem there is they don't have to be the same size. Angle, side, angle, which works fabulously. Side, side, side works well. Side, side is a problem, right? Side, side is a problem because that third side could be totally different, and the, the triangles would not be congruent then. Even SA, 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 which is really, this is just a way of saying the definition of congruent triangles. Every, this is basically saying, hey, if everything is congruent, if all the pairs of, of corresponding things are congruent, they're congruent. And we also added, and they didn't mention this here, we're calling this last one here hypotenuse leg, HL. So this question is, well, what other possible congruence conditions might there be? List some name. List the names of every possible triangle congruence condition you can think of involving sides and angles. So again, I'm going to box this. This is our currently acceptable list, but we're going to in, engage in some exploration then bef beyond that. And I'll put a little question mark here, like what about what about other possibilities? So it. Uh, something to consider was we haven't looked at um, pairs of sides together so we could have side um, and then an angle and then another side so the angles in the middle we could have side angle side um, we could have I, I guess well just like up here where we had the the two angles in the side we could have the um, two sides and then an angle. Um, what else could we have? I don't know. I'm I'm just thinking of these two right now. Maybe maybe something else will come to me. But let's see if we can investigate these two and see whether or not these are valid triangle congruence conditions or not. So let's jump back to Desmos for a moment. And here we have our our broken our broken triangles. Right? These are not congruent. I can clearly make them um, different, but 
what we said I said on the diagram that I wanted to investigate I wanted to investigate side angle side and when we say that it's like we've got a side and then we're gonna go to an angle and then the side so it's gonna be the blue to this angle and then to the red so my wondering is what what if I came in here and I made this angle in between these two be congruent to each other and you remember that to do that in Desmos if I click this I can link these angles and I can force them to be the same okay so I just did that right they're both now 15 degrees um, and they weren't the same before but I want you to notice what happened across the way right this now became a 3.5 this jumped to 106 106 59 59 so the act of making this angle right here the same forced these triangles to behave and and you can see the information that I have here is an aside an angle and then a side and I can show that there is a series of rigid transformation that maps one onto the other I could take point F and slide it to A and then after it's at A I can take this triangle and rotate it around point A whoops that's a little let's get it up oh no 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 let me try that again not that triangle this triangle not that triangle this triangle rotate this triangle about this point there we go until mm -hmm, there you see so see this gray one is where I was at and this one is I can rotate it right and yeah there's a nice series of rigid transformation that map those and <clears throat> I, I sitting here and doing this forever is certainly showing me that I, I haven't broken this yet but it's certainly not saying that it can't be broken so I'm not not willing to say that this is always the case but certainly right now I see enough of this that I'm willing to accept this as a triangle congruence condition at this point so let's add this one to our list also so we're welcoming into the triangle congruence condition club a new member we are going to welcome side angle side so two sides turned out to work kind of as long as the angle in between them worked and oh what the heck let's put a, a beautiful let's put a beautiful box around these again here we go okay so now we're up to one two three four five and six if you include the definition right if you show everything they're congruent but the sh short of showing everything we have five triangle congruence conditions now that's beautiful okay so we still have another one that we should consider the side side and then the angle so I'm gonna take a take a chance on an old friend I'm I've launched up GeoGebra here and in GeoGebra I've just placed this reference line just so I can kinda see what that looks like and I've also set up some angle because I'm anticipating what I want to try and show you with this so I'm gonna start uh, my I'm gonna start by just constructing a segment from that so let's see here's a segment so from here I'm just gonna click a point and then I'm gonna come up here and click I don't know some other point so now I have this segment G and the length of segment G is I could could I show that in the settings let's show its value okay there we go all right so I know I I know oh, I don't want that no go away you um, so I know G and I know G's length and I can oh, it's doing it again to me go away um, I press escape now I can move this there we go so G is about <laughs> look at all those decimals G is about 8.6 and probably if I rounded that to one decimal place it would look better but the one thing I want you to be aware of is I'm not going to change this size right when I'm done this segment has to still be this size because that's one of my segments right I've got a side and I need to do another side and then followed by an angle so this other side that I'm going to do is going to again start 
Um, let me go back here. I'm going to make this side start up here. And I'm going to make this go back down to here again. Uh, right there. That's beautiful. And I'm going to ask the... Uh, that might be a little... Oh, no, no. Move this a little bit closer. And let's measure this also. Let's see. So the measurement of this uh, is... All right, 5.8. We'll call it 5.8. And again, you can see all the decimals here. So uh, not cheating, right? I don't want to cheat. Those two numbers have to stay the same. And the other number that has to stay, um, let's see, that's um, side, side. I'm going to measure this angle right here. So to measure this angle, there there is a... Uh, under the tools, geometry tools, there isn't a measure thing. And I can't remember the order it goes. I'm going to take a chance. I'm going to click this and then I'm going to go E to C. There we go. Yeah, to A. All right. And I can see that that angle is 35.5. Escape, escape. I can move that over here a little bit. All right. So here's here's what I claim. I have right now a side, a side, and then this congruent angle. I've got this set up where I've got side, side, angle. And the question is, is this configuration always going to give me this particular triangle? Right? Is is this always going to say, yeah, if you start with the 5.8 and, and an 8.6 and then this 35.5, that's the only triangle that's possible using those three measurements in that order, side, side, and then angle. And it's I can demonstrate that that's not the case. And that's now, this is why I wanted to use the rotation tool. Um, I've got R as an angle that can go from 0 to 360. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a rotation of segment DE. So I'm going to go to segment DE. I'm looking for my oh, transformations rotate no, no that says reflect mm, that's interesting they don't have I, I know under more if I hit more tools I'll see the, all the transforms there we go so I want to do a uh, ro I'm looking for reflect dilate rotate there we go rotate so I'm supposed to select the object I want to rotate and then a center of rotation so I can select this and I can select this as my center of rotation. And I'm going to choose to rotate it uh, R degrees, an R, lowercase r. And I want to go, um, I think I want to go clockwise. All right, so there we are. So now if I come back over here and I look at R, where'd you go? It's been one to, oh, I wanted to go counterclockwise. But here's what I want you to see. Look at this. You can see I'm not changing the size of this at all, right? But right here, an amazing thing happens. There is a certain number of degrees where I land that all of a sudden, I still have the same side, 5.8, 8.6, and then this angle. But you can see this is a different triangle. The problem is, is that there are two different triangles that are possible here. And, and here they are, right? I'll use uh, this green color to highlight one of them. It's this triangle right here. And these are kind of crude sketches. And then I'll use this orange color. So the other triangle is this one. It goes all the way up to here, all the way down to here, and then all the way back to the beginning. That was terrible. One more try up to here, to here, and then to here. Well, you get a rough idea of what I'm talking about. So if I move this away, let's see, can I, can I, I just can't, I can't separate those. Let's leave it here. Here's what I want to point out is if you look closely, I do have this situation where this side is 5.3 in the red triangle, and it's or it's 5.8, and in the green triangle, this is 5.8.
And then both of them share this side in the diagram, right? In both of these, um, in both of these, this is uh, 8.6 units long, right? And then they both share this one angle. This one angle over here is 35 degrees. So you can see I've got this side, this side, and then the angle. But yet there's two different triangles. There's the red one and there's and there's the green one. So when we see this side, side, and then an angle pattern, nope, not triangle pattern, side, side, and then an angle pattern, the problem with it is that there's two lurking, there's two possible triangles there. So we can't guarantee that the triangles are congruent based on uh, angle side side or side side angle. It's just not one of them. So our list is going to stay here at this point, right? We've got angle side angle, angle angle side, side side side, hypotenuse leg, and side angle side. So that's it. We are at 26 minutes. Uh, I hope you have a great day. And uh, I look forward to seeing you in class and online next week.